Jesus died for me on the cross and that um, I, I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to, to be under the impression that God has left me alone or that I am um, going to be abandoned in this world and enthroned into hell. No, but I will be in this world and from here I get to move on to eternity for life and not for death. And the Satan is the one deceiving the world, it says there, Revelation 12, 9. So the way I got through this was I started speaking in tongues. I could barely do it because I felt like I could barely move. And then um, the Lord had told me once I got home from the gym, I started feeling like a little better. I was taking part of the physical part of the problem. Um, but something in my spirit, he said to me, cheer up. And I said, well, what do you mean cheer up? Like, I physically not, I wasn't feeling, I'm feeling better now, but physically I wasn't. So what does that have to do with me being cheered up? And then he said, heartache. So when he said heartache, I immediately knew what he meant. So there was a, a, a heartache. So I went to a chair where I like to pray and I started praying in tongues. And then I started coming up, I started understanding more what he meant when he said, cheer up. And then he said, I was like, what do you mean by that? And he says, heartache. I was like, okay. Well, this is a word for some people out there. The enemy understands your weaknesses. You have to know that he's been examining humankind for a very long time. And he knows what ticks for you. He knows what you like. He knows what you don't. He knows what will poke you and get you mad. So you have to get to know him better. Don't be afraid of that. Read the word of God and God will start revealing these things. It's not a big deal, really. We have power and authority over him. There is nothing he can do without God's permission. That's why it's important to live as sinless as you can sinless as possible by repenting every day just repent it's it's fine you're not supposed to be so perfect it's okay but have a heart of vulnerability towards the lord to where he can um, have access to you more access to you than the devil you want god to have that access to you and so i know that heartache when i was sitting there and then god started talking to me about that um, I felt the Holy Spirit saying, you know, there was heartache because of some things that happened with your family. And there was heartache from, uh, and some things, you know, regarding your heart, you already got over it. You already got over it. But somewhere along the line, it kind of sneaked back in again at a moment of weakness or something, however that is. Um, so about relationships, heartache about something concerning family or heartache, um, something, you know, um, work-related that's hurt you in the past or maybe currently bothering you, heartache with maybe your kids, something that really was bothering you in your heart and somewhere hidden in there, it was dark, dark in a crevice inside your soul, inside you. So speaking in tongues um, allowed me to shed light on that dark part of me and then I was able to repent about that even if it was something that I really didn't have any direct effect to but um, so God showed me the patterns through people that I follow who are kingdom believers just like I am who work in their own sector of life and then I started praying and speaking in tongues and the Lord gives me a verse kind of clarifies everything and then he speaks about I start taking care of a problem a warfare problem physically but it still needed to be taken care of spiritually and then that's where the heartache revelation came out from the dark part inside of me and as I speak in tongues or I meditate on the Lord however you want to do this then he's going to shed light on that and then he's going to bring it out for you and so then I prayed so what I'm going to do is pray for you right now, and you can repeat after me if you'd like, but this is similar to the prayer that I prayed to, to loosen off the heartache 
that the enemy may have had a little bit of access to through me um, that also threw me into this physical warfare that I was going through on Saturday. Now, even if there isn't, I'm just letting you know ahead of time, caution, that if you have warfare in the future, it doesn't mean that you've given the devil access. It just means that you have to fight through some things. And you fight it for yourself and for your family and for what it is that you're standing for. Whatever it is that you're standing for, you're going to have to go through some warfare. Okay? And that's a good thing. It makes you a threat to the devil. It makes you a threat. And every time the devil's coming after you like that, it's because there is something that's coming that he can see. You have to understand, he can see things that you probably don't see yet, but you have a whiff of it. And the Lord is also opening up sinuses where he's allowing you to smell when something's coming. Now, it doesn't always have to be evil. It could be something that... that that the Lord is doing, that the way he's using his angels to protect you or to open away from you, for, I mean, opening a, opening a way for you or closing things as well. So he's giving us a no, so just receive that. <coughs> I'm sorry, but that receive that right now in Jesus' name. If you want God to continue to show you how or what is occurring in the spiritual realm through sensing it. Just like you're sensing something and you know it's coming. It's a part of discernment. It's a part of a spiritual gift of knowing. Okay. And then you can pray against it or bless it if it's something that you know God is doing. It's a sense of smell that God is giving you to be able to sniff out a situation. Sort of like an animal. When the animal or a shark knows that there's blood in the water, you're going to how much greater are we than an animal, right? To sniff out a situation happening, you look at it and you can pray against it or you can invite it in, okay? You are a warrior. You are a warrior. So, we're going to go ahead and pray what I was praying. You can repeat after me. If you feel you have heartache and you think that this is something that is disabling you in some way um, and if you pray with me great that should help the situation better so before I continue on to the second part then we're going to pray first about this first part if this applies to you as it applied to me and I felt better right after I prayed it was like I took care of the physical part and then the Lord showed me what was going on in the spirit and I just took care of that so, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, and I present to you this pain that I feel in my heart, something in my heart that I didn't even realize was there. So, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me if I've hurt anyone's heart. I ask you to forgive me if I have gone against anybody in any way, if I judged anyone in any way. And I ask you, Lord, to heal my heart from any past relationships that may have hurt me. I ask you, Lord, to heal my heart from anyone in my family that may have hurt me. I ask you, Lord, to heal my heart from any employers or people on the job or acquaintances that I've had that have hurt me. Any heartache that I have had, Lord, that I am aware of or not aware of, I ask you to forgive me for. Please forgive those who have hurt me and I ask you to forgive me if I have hurt anyone else, knowing or unknowingly. I ask you, Lord, to lift off the, off the judgment from me for doing that to people, knowing or unknowingly. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive those that have hurt me. I ask you to not allow them to be hurt the way I have been hurt, but heal, heal their heart as well, Lord. And so I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and I bind and I break all spiritual rulers or commanders in the air that have tried to inflict on me pain. Even if it's pain or forgiveness that I've already forgiven in the past but somehow found a way back into my heart and started growing somewhere without me realizing it. 
I ask you to forgive me for that. And thank you for revealing to me a problem that was going on inside of me. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, so now it's done. You can similarly pray that on anything. You repent. You ask God to forgive you. Because sometimes we don't know unless God shows us. And then ask God to forgive those who have also maybe done harm on you. It's important to do that. Doesn't mean they're going to change. It means that your heart is now being healed because you can forgive. Forgiveness is a big part of our walk in Christ. God has forgiven us. He does it every day. We repent most, mostly, right, for our sins and things that we do. So I hope that that really helped you. And then the second part, I'll make it really quick. I think this is a two-part video. I mean, I think the my phone screen said something or other. So I might have to put these part one and part two. And So, okay. Um, the second part is specifically about that God is removing the mummy wraps. And when I was in church today, God showed me a vision. And um, as it says in Acts 2.17, it says, part of it says that young men will see visions. Now, it doesn't mean that only men and women or men will see visions, but women can too. And it doesn't mean you have to be young. It could be an older or younger. Just anybody can see visions. So in, in this vision, I saw a mummy. And I saw a mummy. You know, you guys know how mummies look. And it's funny that I'm even talking about this because we're in October of 2019. And I saw a mummy, but then I also saw the, the church. And I saw a person, not any particular person, but just a person who had a mummy wrap on their um, wrists. And the mummy wrap was on the wrist. And God was removing the mummy wrap from the wrist. And with that said, mummy wraps coming off of different parts of your body, your legs, your knees, your ankles, your head, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your nose, and every part of your body, God is removing different wraps from you. Now, with that said, as I was sitting there listening to my pastor, I'm like, oh my God, Father, you're giving me this vision right now. And it's not the first time that God gives me something while I'm in service. So my church is very prophetic. It's very apostolistic. And I recommend that you check it out um, online if you don't want to walk into the church. If you just want to watch an online service, go ahead and go to um, RivergateTulsa.com. And there's also a Facebook for them where you can watch it live on Sundays at 1030 Eastern or Central Time. Um, so the church, it's, this vision was for the church now. If the second part applies to you, great. If little pieces of it applies to you, that's perfect. Um, so I'm going to be very careful on this next part because it's sort of interpreting a little bit what the vision was about. Um, think of a mummy is the simplest way I'm going to put it. When you see a movie with a mummy... Okay, and the wraps are coming off, it means, and you see how they're walking, and they're kind of like awakening. The whole message of this is that it's awakening the church. Different parts of the church body is waking up. You are a part of the body of God on this earth who is going to have authority to go into the next age, which is going to be with God and his kingdom for all ages to come. This little world we're living in right now, our little 180 years, 75 years, however long you're going to live, is very tiny in comparison to where you're going. So we keep our eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep it on the prize. Don't worry so much about everything. Back to the mummy. Um... Don't be deceived or afraid. Church, God is revealing something that was sleeping, something that had been laid away for a while, is coming back to life. Or it's going to be in a new form. <sighs> Help me to do this, Lord, the way you want me to. Please, Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit.
when God starts awakening in you what was sleeping for a while, don't be afraid of how it looks. It's not necessarily warfare, so don't be afraid of it. It's going to appear familiar and it's going to appear foreign at the same time. When you start walking into this new thing, you're going to have to learn how to walk in it again. It's going to be foreign, but it's so familiar. You're just going to start to have to touch around and get familiar with this brand new wonderful thing that God is opening up for you again. He's bringing back promises that you thought were dead, and they're not. When you see a mummy, that the sun might shine, and you might glare at it like this, but don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. Let your eyes get accustomed to this again. Let your pupils get accustomed to that light that you maybe was buried somewhere in you. You're going to get used to the walk. You're going to see the light. The glare will go away. You'll be able to see this new place that God's providing for you in this new area of your life again. So don't worry. It's going to come to life. It may seem foreign. There might be some glares here and there. And you may not know exactly how to walk in it. But it's all good in the neighborhood. Just walk in it. It's yours. Learn it again. Be familiar with the land. It's brand new land. <clears throat> That's why I'm saying it's familiar, but it's also foreign. Because a lot of it is new. But you've been there, in a sense, before. So that's a dark part of you that God's opening up. The shackles are off. And God is providing this new way for you. New eyes, new ears, new sight, a new sense of smell, and a new mouth, says the Lord. In the name of Jesus. So don't be afraid. Walk into the new again. And I'm going to bless that on your life as God is revealing it to me. He is revealing it to you. And this is a real on-time experience that I had today. And the warfare that I had, that is how I got through it. It's a real-time way of showing you a warfare that I experienced and how I got through it. And don't be afraid. It's okay. God's got your back. Remember, he has armies, and he did not get left with outside of a third of the angels. He can create anything he wants, as much as he wants, and he can just do whatever he wants. So it's not like if he's limited because he is not. Remember, repentance is very important as a believer. We all need to walk in it. And if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just know that, yes, this is the most beautiful thing you are ever going to experience. You have life eternity to be looking forward to. And, and bring your children in. Bring them in. And um, let God show them who He is. You don't have to try to explain it all to them. If you don't really understand too much, let God be the one to, to do that. So you start going to a good church that, that ministers the word of God, that has a really good uh, child school there. Not a child daycare, but a, a church that actually ministers the word to their kids. That I would recommend that too. You know, whenever I have kids, I mean, baby. That baby is going to be, I'm going to be ministering to that baby from the womb. Like, before you come out. But it's important to, to start doing this. So we've got the mummy effect here. The wraps are coming off. And so just walk into this beautiful thing. I'm going to bless that on you now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, anyone that has been blessed by this ministry of uh, the word that you've given me today um, about about being um, released into a new foreign yet familiar place that is rightfully theirs their stake is on it i thank you lord that you're ministering your word i bless 
everyone who is being released to go into these new places in their life, even if it's in, into something as simple as motherhood, even if it's something as simple as moving from one place to another, even if it's something as simple as, you know, losing weight and that giving you access to some other things, maybe being healed from sicknesses that were holding you down. And now because you don't have that sickness in your body anymore, you can now go into the workforce as this new person. And so I break all kinds of sickness on people in the name of Jesus Christ. I break them off now in the name of Jesus Christ. I break them off now in the name of Jesus Christ. Those sicknesses have no power against you. And I break it off right now in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be healed in Jesus name from whatever it is that has tried to attack your body, whether it's on your bones or your knees. In Jesus' name, we break it off now that our knees will only be used to bow down to the Lord. And thank you, Lord, that you have shown us that you're bringing our enemies to their knees. And I thank you, my God, for the healing that's occurring now in people's hearts and their bodies and their minds. In Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your presence and with the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for opening us up and taking us into the new. Thank you, Lord, this is not about religion at all. I hate religion because it brings shame to people and it takes them away from having the opportunity to have communion, like with the God who created everything. And so I thank you, Lord, for this channel. I thank you, my God, for this real-time message. And I bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I really hope that this spoke to you and that it helped you. You're no longer a mummy and um, or the walking dead. I'm not against them. I mean, I'm not against the walking dead. That plays a role in everything, too. I mean, um, so that's it. So bless you guys. Thank you so much. I think this is going to be a two-part video, I guess. Um, and so, thank you. And God bless you. Eden Life, we out.